This is George Camel. In less than 10 years, I went from negative net worth to net worth millionaire. He did it by working a normal job and following a simple step-by-step -step formula that literally anyone can replicate. In fact, nearly 6 million people have followed this process and have found financial success using it. For those of you who don't know who George is, he's a personality on The Dave Ramsey Show, and he's recently created his own YouTube channel to share his financial journey in more detail. And as you can guess, George became a millionaire following Dave Ramsey's financial roadmap known as The Baby Steps. Now I'll be the first one to tell you that I don't agree with everything Dave Ramsey has to say, but that doesn't mean what he teaches doesn't work, because it does. And the reason it works so well is because of a secret psychological hack Dave implements. Even though from the outside, it seems like finance is all about picking stocks, it's not. According to Dave, And you have to understand personal finance is 80% behavior. It's only 20% head knowledge. So even if you're like me and disagree with some of Dave's advice, this video will not only change the way you look at Dave Ramsey, but also change the way you look at your personal finances forever. In it, I'm gonna break down step-by-step -step how George became a millionaire the secret psychological hack Dave uses in his baby step program to turn average people into millionaires, and how even if you don't follow Dave's advice, you can apply his hack in your everyday life. Let's dive in. To understand the psychological hack Dave uses, we have to first understand his baby steps. So let's break down how George became a millionaire in just 10 years. Dave's number one philosophy is that all debt is bad. So to follow the baby steps, you would have to accept this. And that's where George starts. The first thing I did was cut up the all Amex and Discover cards. Now I know that seems aggressive to physically cut up a card, but aggressive is what it takes if you wanna get out of debt quickly. So now that I didn't have credit cards as a false sense of security, I needed to become the Bank of George. So I saved up a thousand bucks super quick and I set it aside to cover those ankle biter emergency expenses. Now saving a thousand dollars is baby step number one. This step should only take you one or two months to complete, and it's Dave's way of keeping people out of any further credit card debt while they work on baby step number two. Now, once I had a thousand bucks saved, I attacked that $4,000 in credit card debt with a vengeance. A vengeance. I was willing to do whatever it took to throw as much money as I could at this debt every month. So I started budgeting every single dollar super intentionally. I stopped eating out and wasting money. I was doing side hustles. I was selling stuff. I was flipping stuff. I was driving for Uber and Lyft and taking advantage of every sign-on bonus I could get. I was eating lean cuisines instead of steaks. Now Dave Ramsey suggests tackling your smallest pile of debt first, regardless of interest rates, and working your way up to paying off your largest debt. This is known as the snowball method, and for George, his credit card debt was his smallest amount of debt. So now that the credit card debt was gonzo, it was time to tackle Sally Mae with that same intensity. And when I say tackle, I don't mean literally. Although I would love to put on a helmet and just knock the living daylights out of Sally Mae. But let me tell you, when you become debt free and that first paycheck hits your bank account and it stays with you, that is like a magic trick. So in true snowball fashion, he paid off his 36,000 in student loans next. Once you pay off all your debts, not including your mortgage, you've completed baby step number two. According to Dave, it should take no longer than 24 months. And once he did that, so I kept the momentum rolling and I increased that thousand dollar starter emergency fund all the way up to three to six months of expenses for a fully funded emergency fund. And when you know it, next time the HVAC went out and the cost was all on me, it turned an emergency into a mere inconvenience. This is baby step number three. To determine how much a six month emergency fund is for you, Dave recommends taking your monthly expenses and multiplying it by six. So at this point, less than two years after my financial wake-up call, I'm debt-free, I have three to six months of expenses saved, and I'm finally ready to go ham on investing. Hog wild. Bring home the bacon, turn it into more bacon. Give me all the bacon and eggs you have. So when it came time to invest, there's a whole lot of ways to do it. And this was before crypto bros and TikTok were around to add to the confusion. So my plan was simple, and it's still my plan to this day. Invest 15% of my gross income into retirement accounts. In fact, eight out of 10 millionaires reach millionaire status through their employer-sponsored retirement plans. Now, most millionaires, they're not Wall Street or Silicon Valley yuppies always on the cutting edge with the latest and greatest stock or trend. They're just ordinary people with normal jobs who consistently invest in their 401k over a long period of time. Once you've paid off all your debt and have a fully funded emergency fund, you can finally start to grow your wealth 
by investing 15% of your income for retirement. Just like George said, this isn't picking stocks. This is simply investing in index or mutual funds within your retirement accounts. And this is baby step number four. Now, aside from investing into retirement for almost a decade now, the other thing that helped me reach millionaire status as early as I did was paying off my mortgage early. You see, by the time my wife and I got married, we had no consumer debt and we already had savings in the bank. So we decided to do something extra weird. We decided to buy a house that was within our budget and means, save up a big down payment of at least 20%, get a 15 year fixed rate conventional mortgage, and then pay off that bad boy in less than 15 years. We started to ask ourselves some audacious questions like, how cool would it be to not have a mortgage payment by our early 30s? What kind of freedom could we have? What options could we have if we did that? So we saved up more and through side hustles, budgeting, patience, living frugally, we were able to put down well over 20% and moved into the burbs. Now, this wasn't our dream home or a swanky condo downtown. This was a modest town home in a great area that we knew would appreciate down the road when we were ready to sell. So then we started hammering away at the principle of this 15-year fixed rate mortgage, just like I did when I was paying off debt. And we made it a goal to make extra payments on the mortgage every single month. So 26 months later, we had paid off our $165,000 mortgage and we were completely debt free. Baby step number five is putting any remaining money after you invest 15% of your income towards paying off your mortgage early. Because remember, Dave hates debt. And just like that. So as of 2023, 10 years into this journey, between the contribution and growth of our retirement accounts, the appreciation and equity in our home, and our liquid savings in the bank, we are technically net worth millionaires. Now, like I said, I don't agree with the exact order of these steps. And the point of this video was not to tell you to follow them. What's magical about the baby steps is the psychology behind why it works so well. To understand the psychology behind the baby steps, we have to understand how it leverages nature's strongest drug. Now, I'm not a psychologist, so I'm going to give you my basic understanding of achieving goals. Just bear with me. When you set out to achieve something ambitious that you've never achieved before, the task itself feels overwhelming. For example, let's say you set a goal for reading 50 books in a year. Now, when you set this goal, you have some level of excitement at the beginning. And so you use that excitement as willpower to help you get started. But when something feels overwhelming, you doubt your ability to achieve it. And as soon as that doubt gets stronger than your willpower, you give up which is why so many people fail to achieve their goals. The key to reading 50 books in a year isn't actually about reading 50 books. It's not even about reading one book or one chapter or a paragraph or even a sentence. It's about that decision when you're sitting at your desk at the end of the day or when you're on the couch or when you're scrolling through Instagram and you put down the phone. You pick up a book and you read one word. If you read one word, you'll read two words three words, a sentence, a paragraph, a page, a chapter, a book. You'll read 10 books, 30 books, and next thing you know, you've achieved your goal. Do you see what happened there? The key to achieving ambitious goals is to break down your goal into its simplest form, reading one word, and then making marginal improvements along the way. When you do this, you're not relying on willpower. You're relying on nature's strongest drug, dopamine. Because when you accomplish something small, dopamine is released into your brain and you get a sense of motivation, satisfaction, and productivity to keep going. So you do. And to get the same amount of dopamine the next time, you have to do a little more than you did last time. And this cycle repeats until you ultimately reach your goal. And this is exactly how Dave's system works. He doesn't tell you to save a million dollars right out of the gate. He tells you to just save a thousand dollars. And then after that, he tells you just to pay off your smallest debt and then the next smallest debt then save six months of expenses, then save 15% for retirement, then pay off your biggest debt, your mortgage. And because of the dopamine rush you get as you go from one baby step to the next, you actually start to enjoy saving money. Before you know it, your retirement accounts have grown, your home value appreciated, and you're worth millions of dollars. So understanding how to use dopamine instead of willpower is the psychological hack that makes the baby steps such a success which means we don't have to follow Dave's formula exactly to get the same results. Because like I said, I don't think his baby steps are for everyone. So how can we apply Dave's psychological hack without following his baby steps? Personal finance was given the name personal for a reason. 
Everyone has different goals and needs when it comes to money. So to discover what your exact goals are, ask yourself this question. What is the one thing that if you accomplished it would put you in a better financial situation by the end of the year? For some, it's actually paying off debt. For some, it could be investing more money. And for some, it could mean finding a higher paying job. Take that goal and break it down into its simplest form. For example, if you want to pay off debt or invest more money, start by investing or paying off an extra $50 next month, then an additional $50 the month after that, then an additional $50 the month after that. And by the end of the year, you'll be investing or paying off an extra $600 a month than you did the previous year. If you want to make more money in your job, reach out to one person who has the job you want. And then the month after that, reach out to two people. And then the month after that, reach out to three people. By the end of the year, you would have talked to 78 people who could potentially help you find a higher paying job, either through them or someone they know. And you can apply this to any goal you want to achieve in your life, not just your finances. Just like reading 50 books, it's all about starting with one word. The thing is, you now know how to hack your brain into achieving your financial goals. But that doesn't answer this question. Why is getting control over your finances so important? Well, that's why I reviewed Joe Rogan's interview with Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Because even though it's important to know how to save money, it's just as important to understand why you need to save it. So check out this video next if you want to learn how money can give you the ultimate freedom in life.